nature. And so we're just trying to streamline the process. And now that it's going to be held here, its home will be here. And I understand there's some concerns. It's a new park. Uh, I've heard some concerns about are people going to trample the grass? Well, they're going to do that with or without a festival. Um, most of the festival will be held on asphalt as it relates to the rides. So the ability to perform in 2019 is a high percentage. Uh, even if we have rain days, we're on asphalt. We don't have to close down the carnival, which is our largest revenue generator. Um, so in the past, we've had, uh, at last year, or this past year, we had to close down a day and a half because of the rain. That would not happen here on, this, on these grounds because the carnival will be based on the asphalt pathway to the uh, west of the building. So I'm confident that it will be successful. I'm confident that we can handle it as a, as a committee. Uh, and I'm just asking the board personally and uh, as, a, as a board member <coughs> to approve it and continue to allow the community to enjoy the amenities of having a bus. So, so you're saying it's 100% village responsibility, 100% risk and reward? 100% risk and reward. It's going to fall on the village? It is. If we approve. If we approve. Obviously, we all have to vote on that. I would like to echo Trustee uh, Caparillo's confidence that you know we, we've talked to the carnival operator and, and when we showed him the new layout where he would be, he said, all this asphalt, this is a no-brainer, I'll be open this won't impact me, you know, unless there's lightning and he has to shut down. He's no, basically okay. saying, right. And we all know that, you know, we, we had the tent open uh, this this past summer. We had the tent open, but we didn't have the carnival open, and we suffered for that. If the kids were there, the parents would have been there in the tent. We would have had a much bigger show uh, showing on Thursday night. But because we had the carnival closed down on Thursday because of such a mud pit on that grass, um, we suffered in the tent as well. I'd also like to add, I, 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 I feel uh, Trustee Sweets is um, concerned about the 100% liability. It will not rise to $148,000 if for some reason we were not selling beer. If we don't sell beer, we're not buying beer either. So those line items that are in the, uh, in the budget thing, you know, if we don't, if we're <coughs> people to sell beer too, we only pay for what we've sold. So, you know, we, but, you know, if we pull the plug two days before the event, the tents would be up, we would be out that money, we'd be out some deposit money. Out. There are certain things we will not get back, but it won't rise to the, to the level of $148,000. Yeah, and to add, the committee is pretty prudent about looking at various things like insurance coverage. We don't approve anything at that committee, but we bring it to the board as we have in years past. Uh, as we get closer, uh, the highway department is very good about whether we are looking at that from a 14 and 21 day standpoint. You can't gauge weather that long out, but at least it gives you, it gives you an idea of that weather and what the pattern might be. Um, we have never taken advantage of the insurance, it's expensive, but it is coverage that would cover 100% of the revenue loss and or expense if we were to consider taking it. We look at all these avenues, we've had a successful fest, uh, I've been part of it for I think 9 or 10 years now, 8 or 9 years, somewhere in that range. Um, you know, I know it's a big undertaking, but we have a committee that's committed to it, and I think that we will make every best judgment that we can to ensure that it's successful and uh, revenue generated, or at least self-funding, yes. And, and just one more thing on the subject of the insurance, that is not part of our budget. It is not. So if we were to explore that and get a price for that, that would be in addition to the numbers we've already yeah. seen that we've not put any money in the budget for a, a insurance yeah. premium. And I unfortunately don't remember the numbers that we have. No, that's pretty difficult. You have to pick up. A tax yeah. 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 A window. Yes. And Isn't that like fifteen thousand or something? Yeah. yeah. It was very expensive. I just have a question. Can you give me a brief description of what the highway department would be doing, and if they have a roundabout cost? Of yeah. Uh, there is. And I, I, okay. So we worked out. We negotiated with uh, Mike DeVivo, highway commissioner. Um, they typically handle all the parking, all the setup all the takedown of those parking stalls, so they will manage everything for us as it relates to traffic control and parking. Um, we, we've looked at their hours, and um, typically it would cost us around thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000. Don't quote me on the number, I don't have it right in front of me, but I believe Mike said, uh, Commissioner DeVivo said he would do it for not to exceed $8,000, I think the number was. Um, so he's come down drastically on his numbers. He said he would take care of his own 
they'll quote me on this, but personnel's overtime. Um, he, would not, he would make sure that he would fit it within his budget to be able to do that. They would lay any temporary path work that we need, um, stone, things of that nature, so uh, the, the attendees can walk on decent ground rather than potholes and any kind of mud, any kind of uh, things that would you know, be uh, intrusive or, and or um, a liability to us. So they do a lot of work in the background that people don't really realize. And uh, Mike's staff does a fantastic job. They also handle the staging for the tents. Oh, staging. Oh, and the volunteers. All the temporary fencing and all the signage that goes up throughout the village. And also as well as the yeah, and garbage. So there's a, a multitude of things. All under 8,000. Yeah. We did it at A&F and determine if we set up it and not to exceed. I'll give you yeah, I'll give you the number. It was 8,000. It was 8,000. Mm -hmm. Back in 2015, we looked at outsourcing those same services because they're looking Okay, so uh, any other discussion? One question on parking. We're going to be still reliant on the township for parking. Great question. Um, we're not certain at this point. Uh, Mike has confirmed that he will find us additional uh, areas to park if needed. Uh, we would like to get an IGA in place with the township. Um, that has uh, a recent conversation has been a sticking point. Um, so we're going to make it a little more clear as to what our expectations are in our meeting next Tuesday for the township to either sign a, or get us an IGA to sign, or I'd like to consult with the village attorney and or their attorney about just all harmless to allow us to use the property, because I know they've done this with other events, the township has. Uh, they've used the whole thing <coughs> in many scenarios where they either are doing parking, uh, getting pedestrians from point A to point B, uh, holding an event, there's many avenues that we can take for doing that. Um, I am not concerned that if we do not have township property access, that we won't have access. We may have to shuttle people in, which would be an ancillary other expense, but we account, we account for those expenses for the most part anyway, as um, ancillary other items. So uh, there's no guarantee. I, I couldn't guarantee anything. But if we can't come to uh, an agreement with the township, it sounds like there's other avenues to explore. There are many other avenues to explore. We would just have to shuttle people in because it'd be a little further outside of the pocket. We still have the property because the uh, highway department has on 151st Street. Yeah. And actually now double it because now the carnival is not right there. Yeah, we still have that. Uh, so what we're trying to do is uh, see about a pathway that we can cut across so this way it wouldn't be. You're not going to make a mud pit. Those are pretty much the sticking points. Is the, is the highway department, is that agreement complete? Is that in writing? Is that no, uh, the, the agreement with the highway department as it relates to the amount of money is complete. The We would like to get an IGA in place, which we haven't done yet, which we'll talk about at Tuesday's meeting, because I have a very fast meeting next Tuesday, just between us and the highway department. Mike is uh, of the uh, mindset that we already have this in place, and I just said I want to make sure it's up to date and make sure that's where I'm here. Well, as, you, as I've said before, you've done a phenomenal job on the time and the hours, and certainly Keith, since he's come on board, and so you guys have done a, a great job, and I, I think there's a lot of trust there. If, if the option is don't do Homer Fest or um, take it 100% ownership, it sounds like that's the, I think it's an easy decision. And actually, I think they help you guys in streamlining time and effort that's put into it. Thank you, and I agree. Yeah. And it's been a success financial. issue. So, okay. Madam Clerk, could you call rule for A? Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Cabrera? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Berry? Aye. Trustee Nancy Clerk? Aye. Next, a motion to affirm the Parade and Festival Committee's current committee composite composition of 10 members. So, Great. Yes, discussion. Um, the ten members would be half from the township, half from the village? Uh, or how well, explain here's the easiest way to explain it. Because <coughs> I'm not quite sure how many people are actually on this. It's five. It is five and five. We plan on keeping the five and five to the five people from the township. We have to exclude them. Uh, they cannot be on this committee. And Someone is working for the township because of the liability on the township. So we're going to take them off the committees for the township 
and it will put it back on our committee's members. So we have to read that from the village perspective? No. Um, so we will have 10 members uh, on that committee from the village perspective. Since we're and so they, even though they're from the township, they'll be considered village We're going to, uh, the mayor and I have talked, and I think we need to just consult with uh, Eric just to make sure that he, as constituents, as homeowners in the village of Homer Glen and or the township, that they're just as likely to be on a committee as anybody else in the community and that they do not jeopardize the township in any way by helping us as a volunteer. I think the easiest way to look at it is there will be 10 members appointed by the village as opposed to five by the village, five by the Okay, township. so they're village Correct. members, basically. Okay, so I just that, wanted clarification on that. Yeah, maybe just a little bit further on that. I got confused on the five and five. There is no five and five. Right? Well, there is current, 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 current. Yeah, yes. of course. But I mean, going forward, it'll, 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 no, it'll be temporary. The easiest way to avoid by the village and five don't have to be necessarily affiliated with the township. They do not. Okay, okay. okay. No, no, it's just that we have a good makeup of, of the committee yeah. and we're comfortable. Uh, I'll speak for both of us, I think, sure. with everybody that's on the committee and sure. everyone pitches in and I think we have a good vibe. And I hate to use the word vibe in the village meeting, but we do have a good vibe. Um, we feed off each other well, and that consists of current township people, and I, I want to keep the consistency the same. Great. Okay. Any other questions? So, Matt Burke, if you please go roll. Trustee Cabria? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Tweed? Aye. Trustee Nicey Tricky? Aye. Trustee Berrien? Aye. Trustee Gray? Aye. Motion carries. Last. Is there a motion to direct the mayor to sign the Ace Pyro LLC contract for the 2019 Home Community Festival fireworks display in the amount of $33,000 a year? That's a move. Just to Caprio. I'll second. Mr. Tricky. I do have a question now. Uh, I'm coming up to discussion now. Um, Carl, this is um, I know in the past Mike Spiegel had sought out uh, donations for the bunker for the fireworks. Is that going to be contributed to the thirty-three thousand? It will. We um, donations are one of those things where uh, so uh, Trustee Gray had brought up the uh, carnival uh, and the liquor sales. Maybe the carnival. Uh, donations are a big part of our revenue. Um, with it being on Village Hall property, I, I feel more confident than ever that we will get. A good outpouring of don donations coming in. Mike from the highway department has always sourced some of his people, the people he works with daily or, or deals with uh, uh, contractually, and asks for donations for our community festival. I don't see that going away. I think he will still do so, even though he's not directly impacted by it from a revenue perspective. But I think that he will, you know, source donations as we have in the past. So. Actually, we've handled that for the last few years. Well, I know, but he's got some. Connections, he, 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 I guess. Puts yeah, he, he puts out feelers. Yeah, he puts out feelers for me. It covers the cost from them. Again. I don't know what the sponsorships were last year, but I know the year before the sponsorships were around 40000 So that's 40000 covering the 33 now in addition to the 33 No covering. Yeah. We typically well, have not 33000 that just goes toward the fireworks. So those money, there's a $5,000 donation toward fireworks. There's a $5,000 donation, I believe, toward the stage. There's okay. Some of them toward the band. So collectively, we might get forty thousand dollars for them to, to mitigate the entire cost of it. It costs us one hundred forty thousand dollars. You know, so it's not certain things are set for certain for certain uh, avenues. So Meyer, I think, is uh, the stage. Yeah, Meyer is the fireworks. So you know, those those sponsors are tied to those one thing, but it's the money isn't necessarily tied to that. And Sue did a really nice job last year of starting to put together packages for Sue Stein, starting to put packages together for sponsors. So they'll get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And so they feel like their exposure has been spread out. Um, this year, I think, we'll even refine that more and get better visibility for people in certain things. Uh, you know, if you want a seat at the table of the fireworks, you can, you can pay that. You've got a seat at the table for the fireworks. Um, things of that nature. So we always look at different opportunities to make those donations go a long way for those sponsors. So, um, you know, just in thinking about it with, you know, not putting any numbers on paper, you know, if you, if you make, uh, just call it $30,000 at the 
alcohol, beverages area for the whole weekend. You make another $30,000 split from the carnival and another 30 or 40 in sponsors. You have almost covered most of the cost for the festival. Um, so I'm confident that these things will all come together and work well. All set. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Trustee Gray? Aye. Mr. Rogers? Aye. Trustee Nick Detroitsey? Aye. Mr. Burian? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Chase? Aye. Motion carries.